And yeah, if anyone wants to throw a lurk over there, I'd appreciate you. Not required. Here's the link for you. We got chat popped out, and we're good to go. Sweet. <clears throat> Ooh, and real quick, hold on. I just want to brag about this uh, this hoodie again. Yeah, limited edition, Alt F4 stream hoodie. No big deal. No big deal. All right, so we got this working yesterday. We wanted to improve the output. <clears throat> I think I want to go into it and do it from here because cool retro term kind of mangles the colors and stuff. And hey, what's up, Ethan? Alright, so let's see what this output looks like. Oh, I broke something. Oh, <laughs> air breaks. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted that whole line deleted. All right. Oh, we got another. <clears throat> yes, we cleaned up a bunch of our kind of like bad log statements. I kind of like this one. Okay, there we go. So yeah, let's see what this output looks like. You get channel points for watch streaks? Oh, cool. All right, so we get a prediction going. I am not going to honor the bet on this one because we know it'll work. But I want to see what the output looks like. Any minute now. Oh, someone wants them 20 channel points. But yeah, we're not going to honor that. We're going to just cancel, delete. I just want to see if we get colorized output and some other stuff. I'm going to guess that we don't get colorized output because the standard in, standard out gets mangled. But I want to verify that. Which means that theoretically, we need to figure out a way of streaming the output to the CLI. Right? So yeah, we do that. LS-A. Not even close to the same output. So, if we think about this a bit... Golang pipe output 
Pipe standard out. Sure. So according to this gist, yep. So a buff IO, uh, new reader. They do a go routine uh, kind of thing. benefit from this would benefit from more comments oh and I'm curious about this library So, no new features. Twenty-three thousand stars, bunch of forks because people wanted extra features. As far as stethoscope goes, nope, that's a weird bug. Might have to refresh. There we go. So yeah, most recent commit isn't often enough. Uh, sponsor section, I don't think that's a problem actually. Docs folder is meh, right? They got other docs, right? I mean, it's a long readme. Maybe we end up wanting to, in Stethoscope, consider the length of the readme? <clears throat> so instead of docs folder, just call it, like, sufficient docs? And it's still just a heuristic. Interesting we're not getting the author. Okay, so we've got LogRS opened. Let's look at this one too, just in case. Oh. Yeah, so our print line is actually mangling things. So if we go down to here,
and it just returns an error. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna wanna do something here just to verify. Um, this is gonna be that. Yeah, I might need to go read the docs for exit.command. But yeah, let's try it. <clears throat> so one thing I need to go do is... Cancel this. Oh shit, right, because we automated it. People got points. Well, okay. <clears throat> so one other thing I can do is instead of showing this page with the login with Twitch, we could actually just automatically direct to we could automatically like redirect to the twitch page and then they would automatically redirect to here which makes it easier like one less step so we should probably do that it's not too bad Let's see this output. Oh, whoever's betting no? We know it's working. So whoever's betting no on this, what are you thinking? <laughs> like, what are you thinking? No, it would not work on YouTube because the prediction is strictly like a Twitch-based thing. There you go, Nero. Nero's a chaos engineer. All right, so we're not getting our syntax highlighting, but we do get it formatted as we expect. <clears throat> Result dot... <clears throat> yeah, the prediction closes real fast. Here's the thing. Nobody vote on no, and you're good. Now, that said, there will be one that does fail eventually, because I want to test something. Is this the one that's going to fail? And yeah, I want to reduce that friction immediately. Right, we're going to get rid of that, like, click the button step. Hell yeah, Mesmero, nice. And by that, I, I'm guessing you mean some good, like, puns and jokes, like, spread out throughout it. Damn right. <clears throat> you gotta have jokes in there. Okay. So 
So the nose won it that time. We do see the, the exit, exit status one. And the fireside chatbot. Okay. Ooh, I mean, could you describe that more to me? I don't know if I've ever, like, uh, classified the way I give presentations as, like, a fireside chat. So, yeah, what, is, what does that mean? So golang exit.command stripping colors from output. Okay, that's not a bad option. I don't know if it's going to actually do what we're expecting there, though. Less formal, more conversational? Okay, yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, I like that. I'm okay with it. <clears throat> All right, before we test the output coloring and some of that again, <clears throat> I think I want to reduce that friction of having to click that button. <clears throat> yeah, see? So we're still not getting color from here, even though we do the... You know, the start and the wait. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm not sure about this yet. So might not generate colored output unless attached to a terminal or a TTY, right? Uh, Barnell, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Mm. 
<clears throat> okay, so start is exactly what we want. So this answer doesn't have what we're looking for. Oh, so they're doing the out standard out pipe. So we definitely want to bring in IO. All right, so for some reason, we're not getting colored output from this, and that is extremely annoying. Oh, interesting. Aha! That's how they do it here. Oh, and I should have like a check error function. That would definitely help. So we defer that, and we do something like this. What's up, Attack Penguin? How you doing? Are you saying goodnight like you're leaving, or just like it's night for you right now? Ah, you're taking off? Okay. Yeah, no worries, man. Good chatting. See you again soon. Let's see if we get some output from this. Ah, and yeah, we're going to fix that right after this anyway. 
right after I pour a whiskey too. I'm hoping this IO copy works. My guess is that it's actually doing IO copy under the hood when we assign the standard outs, which would be annoying. That's even worse. Oh yeah, let's uh let's do this part first. So when we open browser <clears throat> Right, it's in our start server. Maybe. Mm -hmm. So this string we're passing right here is what we want to fix. First one is client ID. Next one is port. So auth server started at blank. We open browser to this page. All right, let's see if that works. Will it blend? Success. Command will run. Prediction is created. So yeah, right? Reduce the amount of clicks. Way better. So yeah, I don't think we need to log the exact link that we're passing. So where's our open server command or function? Here we go. Opening browser for Twitch. Oh. Uh. So looking at the output, 
auth server started at, opening browser, prediction running. We'll watch it one more time, but do you see the prediction running in chat? That's the tool. This part's a little annoying. want to use it on some type of output that's going to like spin for a bit what's a good command like neon cat can you pass like a, an amount of time for neon cat to run neon cat cli Not much in the docs. Anyone got a good command that like streams output? trying to get color <coughs> excuse me trying to get colorized output in the terminal here let me let me finish pouring the whiskey one sec and yeah um code core i'll show you exactly what it's doing here in a sec i just wanted to like think through exactly what we're doing Yeah, yeah. So I know there's a library for doing colors, but I don't want to explicitly call that myself. Oh, so I can simulate color just fine, Elmon. What I want to do right now is simulate something that, you know, changes its output without, you know, like returning yet. So some like interactive CLI tool. So NeanCat would be good if I could give it, like, a timer. The color is less important right now, because we already know that the color is not working. Right? Or, technically, ls-a. Right? ls-a gets this colorized output. It's also indented differently, whereas our piped output gets zero coloring from our command output. Which is weird, because we're attaching to the terminal. It's just not working right. Pipe it to less? Pipe what to less? <clears throat> Yeah, I think you're misunderstanding the problem. I want to see an interactive output. Or not interactive, but an animated output.
So why wouldn't they have the correct escape codes, right? Because it should be directly passing it through. So those like escape codes should be passed through as well, right? Or am I misunderstanding that? Do I not have Neancad installed? <clears throat> Alright, so hold up. Here's another way we can do it. Um, curl uh, file speed test. Yeah, so a good example would be downloading some multi-megabyte file from... Well, hold on. We're not solving the color thing right now. Right now I want to solve the piped output and make sure that it is incrementally updating rather than just creating new lines. So a curl command to a large-ish file would do it. It's not fastify. Is it fastly? Anyone want, remember, like, uh, I know there's definitely some of these, like, cloud providers or, like, CDN providers that give you, like, a, hey, check out the speed of our download. He's, here's a curl command, and you can compare against other providers. Again, Kbray. I don't think Bubble T would do it if the core standard library can't even do it. I just want to test to see if it does first, Kbray. So I need a command to test with it. That's all we're looking for right now. That's it. We need a command to test it first to, to know if we even need bubble tea or something. Right? Does wget do like the, the timeline? Am I mis mistaking that? I thought curl did a timeline. Time? Why would time do it? Time just measures the time. I just want something with a, a bar that updates. That's it. I want to see the bar of download speed update in place rather than creating new lines. That's something we need to check, and that's it. That's all we're trying to solve right now. I want to know if it will be an interactive update like we're expecting. And I know I've seen this before. I just don't remember what service it was for. Okay, and what is that? Like, explain these commands. I'm not typing some random command into my terminal.
I know what wget does. I know what curl does. Okay. That's way too much work. <laughs> no, not at all. I just want to see if it is interactive. Well, that doesn't seem right. I don't, I don't think I even need that, Elmon. Wget does it by default. This is the bar I'm talking about, right? Do you see this bar? This will complete to 100% interactively on the command line. That's it. That's all I want to do. I understand, but I still need to fetch something, right? And if wget does it by default, why would I need PV? <clears throat> Curl Ubuntu? Yeah, they had some like AVI, but it's only a meg, so yeah, on gigabit, we're no good. Um... Okay, so that'll work. All right, let's see if this updates in place. Gen 2 image? Sure. Okay, so it does update in place. All right, so that piping is fine. So we don't need bubble tea. We don't need anything to manage the piping of this data. That's all I wanted to make sure of. <clears throat> yeah, so we're good. Now we need to consider the color output. And I think that's where you had a good uh, good recommendation, right, Elmon? The CCZE-A? So what is C, C, Z, E? I don't have it.
All right, so we got to figure out how to do the colorized output now. <clears throat> and worst case scenario, we could just leave it as an issue to be solved later. <laughs> That's the command that we're running. The command to be executed by our tool. All we're making is a tool that wraps other command line calls so that we can actually resolve the prediction based upon success or failure. That is the thing we are predicting. All right, doesn't make any sense with wget, but if you're running your tests, it does. If you're running your application, it does. If you've ever been a, in a the primogen stream, he will often do a prediction about will he get it first try? Could he set up a prediction for that automatically, real quick and easy, without having to do it manually through the dashboard? That's it. That's all we're doing. Sure, exactly. Does the title not explain that? Resolve them based upon the CLI return code. What do I need to change in the title to explain that? once we get the CLI tool working. Okay, and how could I phrase it better? I mean, here on Twitch, isn't prediction kind of implied? Because I only have four more characters. <clears throat> Right? And as Cabre is pointing out, the prediction part isn't the confusing part. <clears throat> All right, so next steps. Here's the biggest problem. We can't expect consumers to have CCZE installed. Nope. Yeah, that's a dependency we cannot require of a consumer.
Maybe fried chicken, but the key is a lot of them don't even read the title. We're wanting to colorize the output. All right, LS-A gets green, or blue, or whatever, turquoise. When we run it here, we don't get that. No, I don't need a progress bar. The progress bar was just an example of an interactive update. I don't, I don't want a progress bar. I couldn't possibly predict the progress of some random arbitrary command. That's impossible. All I'm trying to say is the output of our command ls-a when printed via standard out of our tool does not get these colors. I'm just attaching the standard out and standard in. That's required for the piping right, for that interactive update stuff. Now the way they're doing this like color red thing, that ain't right, that's not what I'm looking for whatsoever. <clears throat> we tried using command.standardoutpipe, which uses os.pipe, but that didn't work didn't change any. And I think it actually messed up our output. It actually mangled the formatting of this. And I'm actually, at this point, willing to just leave the colorization as an issue for later. Because we got other things to fix. All right, we got to do releases. We got to do, you know, the go release or go download or stuff. We got to do our readme. That's a good question. Where would I pipe it to? Just SH? Nope, that ain't it. Uh, oh, really? <clears throat> All right, well, yeah, let's figure out how to do this pipe ourselves. Pipe it to cat? Yeah, that mangles everything and loses the color. So piping might be part of it. I think the cat is wrong, though. Yeah, it means it removes the formatting too, which is weird. I would not have expected that.
Ah, dash G. Ah, okay. So yeah, it might be something where I just make sure we do it as part of the docs. Hmm. So if I do the dash G here, will that do it? So that's a good point. Yeah, um, OT also loses color. Interesting. Yeah, maybe piping removes those codes. And yeah, hold on, who said that? Um, Cave Diver, yeah, yeah, good point. Uh, that might be just something I have to call out in the docs, if it'll work. So yeah, if it's just a, a documentation fix. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's for scanning like file size. It's not NCDU. Color always? I didn't see that option. Just say C below, so yeah, maybe it's a little further. Is color like a universal thing? Yeah, LS probably does that. Yeah, you're probably right. All right, so yeah, here's the environment variable part of it. Yeah, I don't see the dash dash color thing. Is that a Linux uh, command, Sergeant Pepper? And what's up, Fernando? I get it, Elkman, but... My goal is to not modify the output of the command in any way. So then if a user wants to not have any CLI output, that's on them. So yeah, I think this is really just a... This is a documentation issue. Oh, it's mentioned in the, the tail end and I just missed it. Yeah, give him a solution in the readme, probably. Yeah, I, I don't think I have GNU LS. Like, yeah, this is, a, this is a Mac. I don't think Mac uses GNU LS. Yeah, this is part of like the BSD general commands, which is definitively not GNU. You're on Mac too? Okay. What version of uh, OS X are you on? I haven't been able to update for a long time. Uh, my Mac Mini is deprecated for sure. Uh, Fernando, I've used Go before. It's fine. Like I am... I am up there with all the other streamers here on Twitch, like at the very tip top of most languages I can be pro like proficient in. I'm a polyglot through and through. My first experience with Go was like five years ago, you know? So this isn't new to me, but it doesn't mean I'm an expert with it either. No, for Vulgator, we're using LS and it's fine, but it's not the same LS that Sergeant Pepper has. Right, the argument he's talking about doesn't exist in the man. Right? It doesn't exist in BSDLS.
Mm-hmm. Straight to jail. Yeah, so it's just a read me issue. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to need to specify arguments. We do have some things that changed. Port for the local server for Twitch authentication. So, there are some caveats to wrapping commands. For now, there is just one regarding colorized. Some commands detect whether they are running oop, in a proper terminal and disable colorized output when not done so. That's a weird phrase. Various commands often have arguments to cause them to force colors in the output. E.g. BSD LS dash A um, would need the Dash G lag added. Will it blend? But um, GNU LS dash A would need the Examples, uh, e.g. that. Oh, oh, that was weird. All right, so yeah, we're getting there. Um, yeah, this is not bad so far. Be sure to consult the man manual or help file for the command you are running. Oh. There you go. There you go, Altman. Hell yeah. 
Yeah, learning a new programming language makes you better with other programming languages. Good ideas are portable. Understanding control flow in a functional language will help you write better JavaScript. Will it blend is a tool that wraps your wraps an arbitrary uh, CLI command. It then creates a twitch prediction that will automatically resolve itself. Uh, that will automatically resolve based on the result of your wrapped command. This could be something like your test files. Your test uh, runner or command. For a library. It could be for a first try check. Right? So, um, as Miro, is this helping? Like, what could I phrase here better? probably be consistent with capitalizing CLI. <clears throat> Should we mention the primogen? Do you think he'd be okay with that? Using GNU LS. Yeah, exactly, Kate. Yeah, so it detects if it's being run inside of a, you know, inside of an actual terminal or if it's being piped, which makes sense. Um, how many tools actually do that? And realistically, once we do a release, we could go run some of our other, uh, our tool, our other tools. I think so too. So, right, we need a usage section. Oh, 
Ooh, we need to do another thing. We need validation as well. So we need to validate the number that's being passed as far as the duration. We need to validate the length of your title. Probably need to validate the success failure string too. Token is fine, it just needs to be a string. Port, we need to validate that it's within the options we have. So yeah, we're gonna have to annotate our arguments better. There will be some caveats to wrapping commands. For now, there is just one. Okay, yeah, yeah, I like the phrasing that better. To run, oh, we need installation in there too. Are you a Twitch streamer who has used this tool? You're more than welcome to have your channel listed in this user's section. Please open an issue titled New User. If you found this tool useful, I would greatly appreciate you sponsoring me on GitHub. To fuel even more uh, fun ideas like this. Not sure how, how to link to that. <clears throat> we could validate the token, but realistically, if the token just dies, like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think it would definitely be scope creep. Just let them know if it fails. Yeah, exactly. Right, there's no, like, harm by them messing up the token. And technically, you don't you don't even need to pass the token. It would be more if you wanted to like keep it saved to prevent the pop up in the future. I'm previewing. Uh, what do you guys see? Is that even live? Have I been messing that up for a long time?
And yeah, dude, I really appreciate everyone who sponsored me. Jens, thank you for the sponsorship. If y'all don't know, GitHub sponsors is one of the best way to support developers that you like. You know, subs are nice because you get a little bit of benefits like here in the stream, but GitHub gives us 100% of the money. It's pretty cool. But yeah, what do you guys see when you see that page? Does, like, is it public or is it like this doesn't exist and it's not like previewable? And hey, what's up, Purple L? Raid message. Okay, you can see it. All right, I think it just shows it's like a preview for me because it's my account, which makes sense. Okay, so it is public. Perfect. Yeah, it's really cool, Chaotic. Yep. I should reduce, like, I should have a $5 a month as well. Have you guys seen uh, Colin Hex? His is really well done. Right? You can be at the coffee tier for $3 a month. Buy him a cup of coffee. You can get him a Chipotle bowl. He loves Chipotle. Loves it. Bronze tier, silver tier, gold tier. Yeah, pretty cool. He has a really well done sponsor page. He's even sponsored by Evil Martians. That's amazing. Dude, he's so cool. All right, so we don't need this. Let's close some of these tabs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all about, like, I'm a collector. Here's something you might not realize. Everything from that tab right there, that little F, to the left, is actually my archive. Yeah, I'm a collector. I got a comic book collection. I got a baseball card collection. I got a starting lineup sports figurine collection, right? I got a tab collection, too. I got a collection of uh, glass cookware, right? Like the old borosilicate glass, not the new terrible bad glass. Yeah, anyone that has like nickel uh, issues, you actually leach nickel into your food when you're using um, stainless steel. You leach iron into your food when you're using cast iron. Glass, borosilicate glass specifically, leaches nothing into your food. So if you have like mineral like issues, you probably want some glass cookware. Now keep in mind that a lot of us probably need the iron and nickel being leached into our food. But there are some people with, you know, issues with getting too much. And that can be a problem. So, uh, Purple L, you're still out there, right? This tool we're making, I'm really proud of. I'm really proud of. Yeah, yeah, better than leaching Teflon into your food. Yeah, yeah. Never, ever, ever use a metal utensil on, like, the Teflon nonstick pans. Like, yeah, Teflon, when consumed, can cause brain cancer. Always use silicone or silicon, silicone, uh, you know, when dealing with a Teflon coated pan, things like that. 
Ah, uh, you're both on naturally low iron. So yeah, cast iron's perfect for you. Damn, we lost purple elf already. Teflon's banned in the EU? I hadn't heard that, but it makes sense. Yeah, it's gnarly. Um, I wonder if it's not even necessarily at the consumer level. Producing Teflon is really bad for the environment. Right? Like the, the byproducts of the process has to go somewhere, you know? And then he grew a third arm, <laughs> right? Like, totally. Gnarly. Um, so everyone that came in from Purple Elf's raid, what was Purple Elf up to today? Um, I didn't even look. Was it more um, Gumroad stuff? <clears throat> oh, she was playing a game. Oh, Baba is You. I've heard that game's amazing. Yeah. I have never played it. Yeah, I've never even played it. Oh, and you know what? Yeah, this reminds me of um, a game that uh, Ear End was making. Right? Like the bear game Ear End was making? Not sure if he's still making it or not. Maybe you? Boom. Nailed it. So, installation, installation is, <clears throat> hold on, the installation script is built by go downloader. Hold on, the releases are built by Go Releaser. I think I just want to. Oh, they have a pro version? Interesting. To install, run this command. <clears throat> to run the tool, you just, um, to run the tool, the only required argument is the command that you would like to wrap. You should wrap it as a, uh, in quotes, 
if there are spaces in the command. All right, so will it blend um, npm run test. Right, you can also configure various parts of the process using these optional flags. And command is just the argument, so we're good there. The title of the prediction, max 45 characters. Boom. All right, dash dash title or dash dash T. probably even do this as a table yeah so github markdown table Must include a blank line. All right. Um, flag shorthand <clears throat> and description. I haven't made one of these tables in my uh, README files. Probably gonna want to switch to a monospace font. Here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> Let's go to Code Sandbox, maybe. New sandbox, um, I think we can just do vanilla. And they use them on a spaced font, right? Okay. 
They definitely do. All right, cool. What up, Lady Blue Notes? How you doing? How was Josh's stream? I was actually lurking that just earlier. Didn't have any audio going, though. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. This formatting is becoming kind of a pain in the ass. Yeah, I'm over it. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, we're doing the readme for the tool because it's working. Oh, you've got a generator? Oh, that's fancy. Oh, that's a cool one. I like that. Yeah, I'm gonna at least get this working and then we can fiddle with it. If you wanna, you know, update it, be a contributor, you totally can. Um, I do need to get the API for this. So yeah, Twitch prediction. So creating a prediction. Yep. I mean, it's for like the thing we're making right now. They don't tell us what the maximum length is for an outcome. Hmm. Let's try and make one. No, no, no. Um, for the length of an outcome. Twenty five characters. <clears throat> All right, 
port dash p config dash c path to config file for persistent configuration of flags. Must be one of, and then yeah, what ports do we have? Um, how do we do bold again? I think it's underscores. Oh shit, it's two of them, isn't it? There we go. Oh, underscores work too, I think. But yeah, it's stars. Yeah, I think either one works. Uh, they're interchangeable. So two underscores is bold. One underscore is italics. Same thing with stars. One uh, star or asterisk is italic. Two asterisks is bold. So, we haven't added anything yet. Oh, that sucks, Radiant. Ah, oh, that's brutal. That is super brutal. See, here's the thing. They shouldn't be mad at you. They should be mad at their boss. That's not your fault. I know, right? Hey, I like that feed. I'm gonna do it too. Boom, nailed it. Well, do you have to work together? If you're not even going to be on the same project, you don't even have to work together. <clears throat> oh! 
Oh, I guess I already have Will It Run. Check this formatting. <clears throat> oh, we need to uh, list out the default. Exactly. Oh, so you're still going to have to work with him. He doesn't communicate well? I mean, kind of obviously. <laughs> like, dude, if he's going to hate you for something you didn't even do. Yeah, there's a problem there. Exactly. Something like that, right? So hold on, let's double check what our default is. Right, and default value is 3,000. <clears throat> mm. I think string bar P is fine. can't do that. Alright, so we just assume 3,000. That'll be fine. Uh, and yeah, where is our config file default? Hmm. 
All right, so now we got to set up Go Releaser. <coughs> yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, the bourbon. There you go. Maybe ask him what kind of uh, whiskey he drinks first. <clears throat> All right, maybe it's whiskey. Maybe it's scotch. Maybe it's vodka. Maybe he doesn't drink. Uh, but okay, cool. Get status, get add. Let's say fix. No, nah, I didn't. Felt like a waste. I might have even been able to bring the loaded flasks on the plane. Seems tricky though. It was delicious though. That was some amazing whiskey. Like, yeah. The Johnny Walker Double Black. Yeah, that was delicious. Ooh, hold on. So yeah, uh, Dianhua, I ended up getting COVID. So how are you feeling? I'm guessing I ended up getting it at like the after party in the event. Shit. That sucks. I'm not even sure where I would have gotten it. Like I didn't even really go out before going to Vegas. Yeah, fucking Rona, man. So yeah. Yeah, sorry, man. November seems to be the month of getting sick at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was just like a regular flu because it's not so bad. But, yeah. I mean, maybe my test is expired, but no, I got, like, both lines. I was hoping maybe I picked it up, you know, after the fact. There you go, Dianwa. There you go. Make sure you get tested, just to be sure. Yeah, I want to say, like, the first day I really started feeling it was, like, the first day I got back, which would have been Tuesday. Yeah, probably when I flew in, because it takes a few days to have happen. Right? Yeah, my symptoms don't feel that strong. I hope so, too. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bummer, man. I, I feel bad about that. Yeah, I just got, like, a little bit of, like, the achy bones and a runny nose. little feverish. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah.
But make sure you're getting plenty of vitamin C and vitamin D. In fact, I'm going to take another vitamin C. All right, meow. Oh, is zinc a big part of it, too? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, man. Absolutely. What kind of jerk would hide something like that? Ugh. I just didn't test myself yesterday because it didn't feel like anything. So zinc, magnesium, C, and D. All right. I am probably low on the zinc and magnesium. But I got multivitamins, so I'll do that. <clears throat> I had multivitamins. Ah, there they are. Chili peppers have more vitamin C than an orange? Interesting. Yeah, that's another thing that's always surprising too. Like, uh, there's more potassium in a potato than a banana. They are. I think I'm doing some potatoes for dinner tonight. Right. Depends on if you like spicy stuff or not. Some people would eat chilies just by the handful. What can't a potato do? Right? They can be batteries. They can be anything, man. Yep, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Damn right. vitamin C content of this. Ooh. So I'm getting vitamin C from my whiskey drink. <clears throat> Ooh. Yeah, I would guess raw. Cooking usually, like, breaks down stuff. Raw onions? Like an apple? Just bite into it? I don't know why. Well, I know why. It reminds me exactly of that scene from uh, the bad Sherlock Holmes movie. I liked that bad Sherlock Holmes movie. All right, so our next step here. Made of yogurt with raw onion? Hmm, that sounds good. Yeah, I think that's another trick too to uh, reduce the amount that you like uh, like cry from an onion when you're slicing it, if you just have like a, a thing of water nearby. Not sure what the trick is. Maybe it's a placebo. There you go.
Field of Sweet Onions? I don't, like, I never actually watched all of Holes. My little brother really liked it. All right, so let's do... Go Releaser or Go Downloader. Oh, he's taller than me. He's just younger. I am on the job hunt. Yep. Um, how do I consume my caffeine? Uh, Red Bull. I've, uh, I've been pretty diligent about limiting it to one day. I did two yesterday because I didn't sleep that well. What's up, Lady Blue Nuts? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, thank you so much for that other link, too. Yeah, Jason, I I would say stop doing that last part. There is nothing healthy about that last part. <clears throat> Ooh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that one looks good. Yeah, one password's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd be down. Um, I think the fact that I've spoken at the Manning Rust Conf would help. I will probably fail if they quiz me on some of the bullshit, though. Like, uh, what's the difference between send and sync? Oh, shit. There we go again. <laughs> All right. I just need to, like, memorize some of that stuff. Okay. Yeah, the description looks amazing. I will be applying to that. Yeah, thank you. For sure, I will be applying to that. That is a great one. Thank you, Lady Blue Nuts. Yeah, there are a lot of React jobs out there. I'm kind of holding out for one that I could do at least a little bit of on stream. But... You know, once the unemployment insurance runs out, I'm not going to be able to be that picky. Um... A 
So yeah, I'm missing a step here. Elixir's fine too. Basically, um, DigitalOcean bought Nanobox and killed Nanobox and never reintroduced the Elixir like awesomeness. So deploying Elixir became more of a hassle than I wanted. Yeah, I'm still kind of salty at DigitalOcean for buying and killing Nanobox. No, I mean, it's doable, but it's just like another Docker deploy instead. Mm, take it easy, Radiant. There's plenty of reasons. React came out when AngularJS was still a thing. AngularJS had major problems. <clears throat> yeah. No, no, no. Modern Angular is not that verbose. Uh, so Scala guys, <clears throat> signals are not the only way to do that, right? Angular has RxJS, which will, you'll probably want to use for anything more complicated, right? And technically RxJS is the old way of doing it for even like simple stuff. That is a big problem. The learning curve of RxJS most likely turned people off of Angular itself. Yeah, it takes a lot of learning. The learning curve is too much for a lot of people. So, uh, Jason, yeah, yeah, Angular JS, exactly. Uh, it, you have to be very specific about that. As another example, if you needed to maintain like Android 2.1 support, jQuery, uh, was it jQuery Mobile? I think it was jQuery Mobile. <clears throat> right? If you needed to support any of the older Android stuff, jQuery Mobile, I think, still is the only thing that'll give you Android 2.1 to 2.3. Or Windows Phone. Or any of this stuff. It's kind of crazy. It wasn't that jarring, but keep in mind, I didn't have to rewrite any apps. <clears throat> I was able to start fresh, like, Greenfield projects. Oh, I probably need to update Go Releaser. Yeah, I never had to rewrite anything. I got lucky.
Ooh, what is this background image? Oh, that's a good one. Solid. Damn, Brew is killing my machine. When you say Coach DB, do you mean Couch DB? Ah, okay. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, it's nice for like the offline database support stuff. <clears throat> I think there's other tools that do the local first thing a little better these days, though. Here's something I find interesting. Uh, the creator of Realm had no idea about Minimongo and Meteor. Bet it gets a remake in your lifetime? Maybe. You know what I'd like to see? A remake of Reservoir Dogs with an all-female cast, all the same dialogue, all the same everything. You know, if they're gonna do Ghostbusters, like, you know, with the all-female cast style, might as well do it for Reservoir Dogs. I could see that being an entertaining film. Who do we think would play who? I think that's the important part. Who would be, uh, you know, Mr. White or uh, Mr. Pink? Technically, Ms. White and Ms. Pink. Dude, fucking homebrew is killing my PC right now. <sighs> yep. Now, Radiant, tabs get backgrounded. Tabs get cached. The tabs themselves chew up basically nothing because Chrome is really good about backgrounding and hiding that shit. It gets paged to disk, and when you need that tab, it'll load it from disk. It's not even occupying RAM most of the time. It might be sitting in virtual memory, which is on disk. So it would only slow things down if I load it. I get it, Radiant, but how often do you think I hear those shitty jokes? Yeah, frozen tabs, tabs that have been backgrounded by Chrome, do nothing towards your RAM count. They don't take any CPU.
A lot of the time when people make those jokes, they have a fundamental misunderstanding of virtual memory. The more I do, the more I slow it down. We can just let it finish. Now Rust Analyzer probably doesn't need to be running. Go Bootstrap does, Windows Server does, all this stuff needs to be there. Firefox is how I see chat. All these other things, right? Anything below right here, meh. No, I've never tried Chrome OS or Steam. Firefox is really chewing up more than it should. Yeah, waiting is the best solution. I find it weird that it's not even refreshing. Mm, I don't tend to drink those. More of just like a whiskey and Coke, whiskey, lemonade. If I'm out of mixer, whiskey and water. Whiskey and whiskey. Yeah, not a bad mix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whiskey and whiskey. What's up, Ash? How you doing? <sighs> All right, let's see if we can show this one. That's a good background image, right? Leak code streams, it's pretty rare, but I'll end up probably doing some as I interview for some jobs. You know, I gotta have like reversing a linked list and breadth first search and all that BS done.
But yeah, I think this is a Muhammad Ali fight. Is that Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier? Is this the Thriller in Manila? You're saying the leak code streams sound fun? Yeah, they're not bad. Yeah, I don't actually enjoy it. My biggest joy programming is building something that doesn't exist yet. Hence the tool that we're making today. We're building something that doesn't exist in the way I want it to. Like the feature flag stuff. If I was born a hundred years ago, I would have been some kind of inventor. Improve bug issue template. <laughs> I could do reverse binary search and assembly. I don't think I could. I disagree. No, I'm I'm actually really bad at leak code BS. It has no relevance to front-end dev. Now, if you're building a framework, then it does have relevance, you know? Under the hood of Preact and React and some of those other things, yeah, they got linked lists. They got all sorts of stuff. The virtual DOM is a tree. I don't think they are that important. Dell just had good lawyers. Oof. <laughs> Brutal. Wait, wait, what's up, Jason? I don't think I understand that comment. That's my bad, though. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Ah, that'd be... Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, that'd be a good meme. Feel free. If you want to give me attribution, that's fine. But if not, no worries. I think that would be a great meme. Do it. It's just song. Okay. You can post it over on Reddit to programmer humor. My Mac Mini is very slow. Right? It's like a 2015 Intel Mac. Oh, I will, Jason. I just want to, you know, steal your thunder. A Mac Pro trash can? Yeah, and I think I might even only have like 16 gigs of RAM on this thing. Oh, it looks like a trash can? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, to me, the um, the Mac Studio looks pretty good. Again, I can't afford that shit, so. Yeah, Mac Studio is beefy. Granted, like, just an updated Mac Mini would be fine, too.
Anyone know what movie this is from? I can give you some hints. That's Jonathan Price in the background. The director is the same director of 12 Monkeys. Terry Gilliam. No. It is quite possibly one of the weirdest movies you'll ever see. <clears throat> the movie is called Brazil. It's like a wacky, dystopian, like more dystopian, but also extremely wacky, like 1984. Ah, yeah, exactly, Dianhua. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry, man. I feel bad about that. It also kind of even helps explain why my stomach was so bubbly. I just didn't think about it. Yeah, exactly. Have I had whiskey with a sub in life? I've had a whiskey with a mod. Fuck yeah. I've met and hung out with a, a bunch of like uh, viewers, randomly. Uh, one of my viewers, PM Walls, was at React Summit. It was awesome. I had a whiskey with Ken Wheeler at React Summit. Okay, what is this shit? Come on, Mac Mini. How is the response to my talk? No comments. I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, Ken Wheeler? Yeah, Ken Wheeler... He's got stories. The one I'm really happy he told me is like, he uh, he asked me, he's like, hey, was that you that posted that snowboarding clip? I was like, yeah. He's like, damn, dude, you used to shred. And we started chatting. I was like, yeah, I used to get free gear. I was a snowboard bum for like 10 years. And uh, he was like, oh shit, yeah. I used to get free gear for rollerblading. Which is legit. I'm like, yeah, misty flips and shit. Like, he, I guess he used to kill it. I don't think I was, that was privileged information. I don't think so. I think we're way past looking down on rollerblading. That's like such a 20 year old thing to do. Like, ugh. Now soap shoes, we can still look down on those. Oh yeah, we can still hate on scooters too. I have, like, at the high school I went to, there was a kid that was, like, a sponsored scooter. Like, I think, actually, he was in my brother's grade. But, yeah, like, in the neighborhood, there was a sponsored scooter kid. He was good. He was really good. Let's delete this go releaser file because I don't think it's right. React Summit in Amsterdam. I'd love to go to that. I need my passport. So yeah, I need to start setting that up because getting a passport is a good like six month thing. But also, I would need a job at the time. Yeah, they're actually like trying to distance themselves from like the stoner like stoner culture stuff, which is weird to me.
Yep. <clears throat> yeah, there was like articles on Reddit and everything. I mean, I can understand it. Like, who wants to be the one that gets all the skeezy stoners, like, going to where you live, you know? It's not even good tourism, right? Skeezy stoners don't spend that much money. They're typically broke. Weed's pretty damn cheap. People barely, like, overconsume it, you know? It's why, like, weed is legal in Vegas, you're not allowed to smoke any weed on the strip. Technically, I did. But yeah, like, they really frown upon smoking weed on the strip because you're probably not going to gamble as much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure they've done, like, extensive studies about it and shit. Now, granted, never felt like a big deal, but they got signs plastered everywhere that it'll be a $500 ticket if you get caught. What is the logic behind it? Money. They want you gambling. There's only so much you can spend on food as a stoner. The amount you could lose gambling is limitless. And yeah, with alcohol, you're more likely to gamble, right? You're more likely to keep gambling. Public order issues? No, alcohol is way worse for public order. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that Bill Hicks uh, quote from his stand-up. Hey, you're at a, a sporting event or a concert or whatever, and you'd see two people fighting. Are they stoned or drunk? drunk right because fighting on weed is fucking impossible hey buddy hey what end of fucking conversation <laughs> right it's yeah bill hicks is the best comedian <clears throat> All right, so I'm missing something about this. Yeah, exactly, Ash. Yep. And hey, what's up, Bruno? Been a little bit. Yeah, when I was in New York, we were chatting, uh, like, walking to the after party and stuff after the event. And we're, I'm chatting with, like, Dev and uh, Taz and a bunch of people and... Like, somehow, the smell of New York comes up, and I got to quote that Bill Hicks quote, too, right? Hey, Bill, you quit smoking, you get your sense of smell back. Uh, I live in New York City. I don't want my sense of smell back. <laughs> Is that urine? I smell a dead guy. Hey, honey, come check it out. Someone peed on this dead guy. Oh, man. Think of all the wonders I found now that I quit smoking. <clears throat> there's another good bit um where it's like uh y'all remember when uh yule brenner died and they came out with that commercial i'm yule brenner and i'm dead now cigarettes killed me 
right? That's weird. But you know what? They could have done that with anyone. Y'all remember that health nut, Jim Fix? Right? Jog 10 miles a day, ate nothing but tofu. I'm Jim Fix, and I'm dead now. I jog 10 miles a day, ate nothing but tofu and nuts, and I'm dead. So is Yul Brenner. I used to see him running uh, while I was out on my run, driving by. C uh, cigar in one hand, whiskey in another. Oh, that life will get to you one of these days, Yule. <clears throat> and now we're both dead. Shit. But you, could you imagine if they did that for me? And this is Bill Hicks saying it. I'm Bill Hicks and I'm dead now. Smoking didn't kill me. A bunch of angry non-smokers kicked the shit out of me after a show. I tried to run. They were faster than I. I tried to hide. They heard me wheezing. Yeah, if y'all haven't heard, like, Bill Hicks' comedy routines, they are really good. We might have to watch him on gaming stream one of these days. He's definitely got some jokes that are a bit meh. And yeah, what's up, Mr. Shotless? Oh, and what am I drinking? So this is a whiskey lemonade. And I just remembered I haven't taken my vitamin D yet. I haven't taken any vitamin C. I should probably also take a multivitamin. Alright, so... Dude, what is with my cursor? <clears throat> it's just stuck as the italics thing or the, the text selector. That's annoying. Oh, come on, trackpad. Uh, no, I have COVID. Just took a test today. Based upon symptoms, I think it's the second time I've had it. Alright, so we got no tags? Hmm. Yeah, it's a bummer. It happens, you know. Yeah, I feel like um, due to symptoms and like the achy bones and some of that, I most likely had it like... Uh, like a year and a half ago, as well. My test didn't come out positive, though, but could have been me just messing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm already feeling better. I'm not, like, sniffling as much. So I think I'm already kind of coming out of it. I was definitely a bit feverish last night. You know, the achy bones is also a fever thing. <clears throat> it was really light for you? Nice. Um, I mean, Mr. Shotless, it's been a while. I don't think that number should matter. I really don't like relying upon or advertising how long I've been programming because, again, I bet we all know people who've been snowboarding for 20 years and suck at it. Right? The so time spent doing it doesn't matter nearly as much as the effort you put in during that time. Yeah.
right? Um, at the time, I had been snowboarding for maybe like 10 plus years. I met a kid who had just started within like two or three, and he got sponsored pro. I only ever got free gear. Yeah, exactly, Bruno, right? Often in those cases, they have 10 years of one year worth of experience, rather than 10 years of experience. So, yeah, like, the number is meaningless. Anytime someone will jump in saying, like, hey, I'm, you know, you should listen to what I'm saying because blank. And they use, like, the time they've been doing it as the reason. They're only doing that because they're either not capable of explaining their point better. Or they don't respect you enough to try and do so. So at that point, it's just not a good conversation. It's a logical fallacy for a reason. Is attractiveness important for sponsorship? I think it is probably relevant. See, now that's actually a really good reason. I am right because kittens are adorable. You can't argue that logic. You can't argue that logic. <clears throat> ah, so I need a GitHub token. Cool, sexy, nice. Ah, there you go, Fury Will. That's a good joke. Thank you for throwing the joking on there. Hold on, let me make sure I'm not missing any other comments. Um, yeah, the attractiveness thing. I think that's tricky. To get free gear? Nah. To go pro? Possibly. That is true. Ah, there you go, Bruno. I think we've all met some bad dogs, but it's not the dog's fault. Right? It's the owner. Yep. All right, so here's the thing. We're gonna go release this. Dude, what is up with my PC, man? Like I can't paste. I think I have to reboot. Yeah, I just think I gotta reboot. That's annoying. Because, yeah, I haven't been able to, like, uh, refresh. I haven't been able to, like, copy-paste properly. Super annoying. So, yeah, I'm going to reboot. You had that bug, too? Yeah, like, I wasn't able to paste. It's so strange. And even now, it seems like it's just... Dead. Oh man, yeah, everything's broken. All right, fuck it. And now, yeah, this thing up here is broken.
All right, let's double check this. We'll close that. Are there any windows that I absolutely need to keep around? Not really. So yeah, sweet JS. I'm gonna put that over there so I just have it for later. Um, bun macros is fine. I just got some tabs I don't want to fully lose. Ooh, and this is like the accessibility stuff. Ooh. Yeah, we're just gonna close that one. Oh, yep, I definitely want to keep these. <clears throat> Firefox stuff is fine. Yeah, here we go. So, powering down. Oh, and someone asked... Yeah, yeah, my bad. I do have two PCs. So I got the Mac Mini that's over here, and I got my stream PC on the left, and that's why I'm able to reboot without losing my stream. If you are going to be a dev streamer, the dual PC setup is actually required in my opinion. No, I have a separate gaming PC down to the right. The gaming PC has a 1080 in it. Uh, the streaming PC, I think, has like a 2060. Something like that. So I'm using a capture card. He does it with VMs. Makes sense, but there will still be times where he gets fucked. So here's the thing, Sergeant Pepper, right? It's still worth it to just get started rather than getting the perfect setup because you don't even know if you're going to continue doing it. See, yeah, I'm not sure either, Bruno. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, yeah, so Sergeant Pepper, I'd say screw it. You know, you got to build your audience first and make sure it's something you actually want to keep doing rather than just spend a bunch of money and then it's a waste. Uh, and four-wheel, no, so I have an HDMI switcher in which I just, like, press buttons for the various inputs. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jason. <laughs> it's such a good line. <clears throat> yeah, I'm so sorry. My bad. So yeah, I got a capture card with only one input, but I can switch the inputs using an HDMI switcher in front of it. Fuck yeah, I still rewatch Spaceballs. We watch all sorts of stuff over on Gaming Stream. We're gonna have to do some more just like hanging out type streams over there. Possibly still Sundays, I'm not sure. But for the most part, I need to pick a day in which I can start, like, editing video to really, like, yeah, get the uh, YouTube off the ground. Alright, the YouTube's going, sure, but, like, you know, I gotta, I gotta make more content. Because I gotta, like, a, I think a lot of good ideas for content, but I gotta actually do it. You saw some stream reference ALF the other day? Damn right, it's so good. 
Yeah, we've been watching Red Dwarf a bunch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got the bleeps, I got the sweeps, and I got the creeps. The what, the what, and the what? Where was this tab from? This is nifty. I forgot about this. Yeah. I don't need that because I can just search it again. Yeah, that's not all he's lost. Exactly, Kinslayer. No, I don't think so. Now, Red Dwarf is like a, a sci-fi show. Started in like 1985, I think. Went for a good like three or four seasons, then had a break, then had another couple seasons, then had a big long break. And then, you know, they made some new ones. No, it's fine, Bruno. <clears throat> All right, let's uh, resituate things. This is right. I hate having to reboot. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. is this one Let's try quitting that. Well, those are weird. All right. All right, let's shuffle this back over. All these are in the same folder. So. 
<clears throat> Alright, so we've done the quick start. Alright, so minimum permissions for this token are right packages. I am going to have to hide the screen for just a sec. my phone for two factor off. Give me just one sec. Oh, <laughs> that was the wrong one. There it is. Oh. Alright, so give this one a name. This is go releaser description meh. All right, we can scope it to a specific repo. Repo permissions. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think that's it. All right, let's go to this one instead. Okay, so right packages.
<clears throat> yeah, sorry, give me just a sec. Can't reveal this token. Alright, so we do a go release using token from GitHub token. It's just doing a snapshot. I need to hide that tab. Looks like I closed it. Let's copy some random thing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it was probably a bit loud. Yeah, the combo breaker one's a bit a bit noisy. You were distracted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. Oh. So it's doing the 0 0.1. .1. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Shit. All right. No, I got to do this one more time. Yeah, Killer Instinct. Have you seen the documentary for Killer Instinct? It's really good. remember yeah let me go find it okay bad credentials i didn't give it the right permissions um like the first half of it is really the part that matters fight on that's the name of it <clears throat> Here you go. This is the one. In this documentary, they go on to describe, like, why it was always the loudest, like, the loudest thing. It's actually kind of genius. <coughs> like, somewhat brilliant. So, it doesn't spoil the whole thing, but basically, they knew. Like, so, they knew a lot about how arcades released games. 
when an arcade game is getting installed into an arcade, the person installing it, the technician, will play the game to adjust the volume level to the other games in the, in the room. Now, they recognize that the technician playing would most likely not know how to do an ultra combo or any of that. They'd do just like a regular like combo type stuff. So instead, they made each like level of the combo system three decibels louder. And I don't know if you know this, but three decibels is technically twice as loud because decibels are on like a logarithmic scale. So by the time you get to ultra combo, you have doubled the perceptual volume of the announcer saying something like four or five times. So it's like an exponential scale of like once ultra combo happens, you're going to hear it from across the room. You're going to be like, what the hell was that? So yeah, it's pretty cool. It's kind of genius. And hey, what's up, Acorn? I am sitting here setting up some uh, GitHub tokens. So give me just a sec. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, let me do the shout out here in a sec. Had to reboot the Mac Mini. That's never fun. What were you up to today? And yeah, the thing I'm working on is almost done. You're more than welcome to use it. For everyone joining, the tool that we're making is basically a wrapper around any arbitrary CLI command that you would like to create a prediction for. So theoretically, that arbitrary command could be npm run test. So what it would do is the CLI tool would go do like the OAuth flow so you can log in and get a token and then it'll actually go and create a prediction via Twitch's API with a title and a name and a duration that you're looking for. And then after the duration of like time in which people can like bet their money on whether your CLI command succeeds or fails, once that's done, it runs your command and automatically based upon success or failure using status codes, it will resolve the prediction for you. So it's just less steps for doing a uh, will it blend style like, you know, test run. <laughs> there you go, Kinslayer. Solid reference. Solid reference. Right. But I gotta create a token. The token I just made is missing some permission, which is annoying. Their docs were wrong about the permissions I needed. Yeah, I, I think I have to give it just full permissions, which is annoying, but whatever. to clear history. I forget where that even is.
clear buffer. <clears throat> Alright, so I think we should be good. Get out there and talk to more people. I know it's not that simple, but, you know, it's a thing. But yeah, so Acorn, you were saying uh, linking the back end and front end of Pool together. A few more days and maybe it'll be playable? Awesome. Hell yeah. Is it just one-on-one, -on -one, or, like, how many people can you get into it? Can, like, you know, do you do cutthroat? Do you do, like, different games, or is it just 8-ball? And I'm just curious, like, you know, no big deal. Okay, so we do have a release made. Um, how about go downloader now? God damn it. All right, well, we gotta delete that. Delete the token. Yes. All right, so they got a bug there. There we go. Right, even GitHub has issues bugs that crop up technically if you create a classic token and haven't refreshed and it's still showing when you go to click delete it doesn't actually delete that's a weird bug <clears throat> all right so whatever now time for go downloader Yeah, deprecated. I don't care. I'm going to use it. <clears throat> oh, so hold on. Lightspeed, that is maybe separate, right? That's the GitHub CLI, when realistically you probably need to set it in your like global Git config instead. Which is super annoying, but it's tough because, like, the GitHub CLI is a separate thing. Git is a separate thing. It can wrap Git? Sure, but as a wrapper, Git is still going to use the Git stuff. <clears throat> uh, this generates that, like, you know, sh file for installation, so that you can just have that nice, like, curl command.
Uh, because that doesn't actually determine what platform you're on. All right, we generate a separate binary for every platform. Go, uh, go downloader determines which binary to download. It also requires that someone has Go installed. All right, a consumer of this library shouldn't be expected to have Go installed, All right? That's a bad user experience. That's not what I was looking for. <laughs> like a get machine. Hey, coding with strangers. Whoa, dude. Yeah, thanks for the gifted subs. So yeah, congrats there, Melky, Privan, and Dan is bored. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Mr. Sir. Damn, that's a dead link. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Mr. Sir. All right, so no longer actively maintained. All Go Downloader does is generate an sh file that you can curl. This install.sh file. There's also an uninstall. It generates all of this junk to determine the right binary for you. It's just a bash file.
what you end up getting is one of these style curl commands. Yeah, it's really cool. But I don't remember how I was generating all that. Yeah, maybe I'm missing it? <clears throat> okay, did I just miss it? Looks like I had the command in my history, which is nice. Maybe I need to do another brew install. Oh wait, we had a hype train going? I didn't even notice. Hey, thank y'all. Ah, thanks, Gunning with Strangers. Go choo choo. It's growing on you. It's not bad. It's pretty solid. It's good to zone out to. All right. So hold on. We go back to here. Was there anything at the bottom?
Huh. <clears throat> okay, so they hate this. Oh, okay. Field version not found in type. Config.project. Wow, this go releaser file is really simple. So part of the problem is that we updated Go Releaser, which means that it's no longer compatible with Go Downloader. Right, so install Cobra, build and run, install the releaser. That could be the move. This is super annoying. I consider this an essential part of the uh, process. Super annoying that Go Releaser didn't. And their docs are just lacking. Why would anyone pay for pro Go Releaser when their docs are just so empty? How does the pro license even work?
Hmm. Yeah, all right. So I was going to actually be really sad if the thing we're looking for with Go Downloader is part of the pro version. But it looks like they just don't even have that. On the roadmap, create Windows installers. Hmm. Okay, so how about this? Let's look at what's in here. It's a fairly long file. But yeah, maybe this is just the move. Yeah, we'll just copy and paste the install file. All right, we just do that. Call it good. Yeah, the rest of this looks pretty good. Okay. So let's go grab the uninstall. Okay, so there's no uninstallation. I think that was it. At first, I was making my own install.sh script. And I think I was going to make my own uninstall script, too. So, yeah, we're not doing that part. So, we got the install script. Let's uh, basically, basically go copy what's on Git Machine. <clears throat> So in our readme file, we want to update that section. It will Right, so then you can also pass in a directory already on your path.
All right, so then releases would be here. Oh, that's get machine though. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. We do that. We need to get this pushed up. All right, so we have the install script, update the readme, get that pushed up. Will it blend? Ah, shit. No, it will not because I forgot to update some links. All right, will it blend? Hmm. Doesn't look like What's up, Standard? <clears throat> All right, so that still works. Yeah, it's not gonna do anything right now. We'll let it run. See so yeah, we got the prediction right there. We're going to remove that. Will it blend not found? So something's up with our install script. It's getting to info found version.
then the execute function is up here. So wait, where it oh prefix is right there. <clears throat> All right, so let me try this. So we're making it into execute. We don't have that yet. Made it past uh, download. Okay, so my guess is it's the HTTP download. see a dot bin folder so we're doing all right let's change this <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> all right so log debug I really don't know enough bash to know what's going on here. Um, Vuslock, thank you for the follow. Hmm. Okay, I see. If we just set this to seven, we'll see all the other logs. <clears throat> oh, status 404. Uh, what?
What the hell is the issue here? So Tar.gz, we see the Darwin stuff. CM Griffin, will it blend, releases, download, the version, and the tar.gz. Oh, so it no longer has the version in the title. Okay, that's easy enough. I just got to figure out where that's being set. So we see it being called there. <clears throat> Where do we see this link being constructed? Tarball URL. Where is that defined? <clears throat> ah. Okay, so now for the checksum. Why would that checksum be failing, right? What's the deal? Ah, okay. Project name and version. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, let me set log level back to the six.
wherever that was. I think I lost it already. I totally lost it. There it is. All right, so log info. I think this one is debug. Let's go look at the diff, actually. So the download one, and that was it. All right, so the fix here is Reset log levels to where they should be. All right, so we get that up there. Will it blend help? Nice. Success. Will it blend? Long day of work, so chilling for a bit. Nice. So get your votes in. This is basically the final release. <clears throat> Not final. We got a bit of work to do on the uh, that finishing page. We get the LS, we get the success, boom! Hell yeah, I think we're good. Got a new webcam for VTubing? It depends, Lightspeed, it depends. All right, let's close some tabs. I know that's what all y'all are waiting on. Able to drop 10K what? Looks like uh, you weren't. You didn't get it in there quick enough. Oh, you almost dropped that in. Yep, yeah, you didn't quite make it. Would have been a free 10,000 channel points, basically. Nah, just kidding. The people betting against you only bet like 20, so. You would basically get back what you spent, plus like splitting the 20 with other people, plus like, you know, just some BS. All right, so description time.
a CLI tool to wrap arbitrary uh, CLI commands and start a Twitch prediction based on whether the command succeeds. Yeah, there you go, exactly, Mr. Demon Wolf. We got any streamers that want to try this out? You have to be affiliate or more so that you have channel points. Probably need to add that. Warning. Your channel must be affiliated or partnered. I think I'll wait to tweet this till tomorrow. Yeah. Um, anyone notice any issues with the uh, readme, etc.? Feel free to create an issue or a PR. And, uh, yeah, we'll get this updated. But I'm getting really hungry. Like, really hungry. It sounds like potatoes, onions, and summer sausage time to me. Right? So who do we go raid? Who's streaming right now? We see Allie. We see the Coppinger. Begin bot's actually going. That's pretty rare. Hmm. Ear end is going. We see duct tape DevOps. Definitely an option. Yeah, let's go raid alley. she even doing leak code problems oh god eh, it'll be fine so let's go say hi <clears throat> to ending with Allie. i'll be over on gaming stream here doing some cooking i think the audio is still borked so it'll be uh like silent film style while i'm cooking and then yeah we gotta figure out what game i play i don't even know yet but yeah, let's go say hi to Allie. I'm going to click that button and uh, see y'all tomorrow. I think tomorrow, after a brief 
uh, you know, like double checking some things, tweeting about will it blend. We'll probably hop back to Vexilla. More of the Basil stuff? We got some marketing page stuff to do too, right? Like the docs. Yeah, thank you. So, I am going to pause the music. I am going to stop the YouTube stream. Thank you all for hanging out over there. Really appreciate that. And, uh, yeah. Boop, boop.